Hi friends, today I am going to talk uh, briefly about sodium potassium ATPS pump. Uh, you will understand why I have taken this topic today at the end of this video clip. Uh, okay, uh, this is a cell, human cell. This is plasma, this is a uh, cytoplasm. Uh, inside the cell, the pot potassium concentration is very high, around 150 millimole. Uh, but sodium concentration is low, very low, around 30 millimole. Uh, in contrast, the, the potassium concentration in the plasma is around just 5 millimole. Uh, but the sodium concentration is very high, around 150 millimole relatively very high when compared to intracellular sodium the sodium concentration is uh, very high so how this uh, electrolyte difference maintained uh, because uh, if if we left this electrolyte in this manner what happened so uh, what happened is sodium uh, try to leak inside because of the concentration gradient the here 150 uh, the here 30 so sodium try to come uh, to inside the cell by diffusion uh, similarly potassium try to leak outside the uh, uh, cell by diffusion because of this huge concentration gradient but how this uh, uh, concentration gradient is maintained that is because of this pump that, that is called sodium potassium ATPS pump. Uh, this uh, what this pump does is it pump uh, actively potassium inside the cell. When two potassium come inside actively, that means uh, in the use of ATP, it use energy to pump uh, potassium inside the cell. When it pumps two potassium inside the cell, uh, it pump out three uh, sodium ions outside the cell that means into the plasma this is how uh, uh, this concentration gradient maintained by which it uh, maintain the resting membrane potential of the cell uh, okay think if we activate this sodium potassium uh, ATPS pump what will happen uh, when when we activate this pump the you can see here the potas more potassium come uh, inside the cell because the activity is high so it pumps more potassium uh, from uh, plasma to inside the cell uh, similarly it pumps out more sodium uh, from uh, cytoplasm to plasma this uh, this is what uh, exactly happened when we give insulin uh, to a patient with uh, uh, hyperkalemia when we give insulin insulin go and activate this sodium potassium atps pump uh, by which it uh, reduces the potassium concentration in the plasma this is why we are using uh, insulin dextrose uh, drop uh, to a patient with patient with hyperkalemia in addition when you treat a patient with diabetes uh, a high blood sugar with insulin you must always keep an eye on electrolyte that means potassium level if they ask a question what you monitor uh, in addition to glucose you must say that i am going to monitor potassium because insulin pump uh, potassium inside the cell and cause hypokalemia so I, hypokalemia is a very serious problem if, if, if it is uh, go uh, uh, below a uh, critical uh, level so it's very important you must monitor uh, potassium uh, when you give insulin to a patient uh, similarly uh, you can see some 
blood reports of diabetic patients. When the diabetic patient come uh, come to the emergency department, uh, when they have a very high blood sugar level, uh, there is a tendency uh, that they can have slightly higher potassium and slightly uh, low uh, sodium uh, in the plasma. That is because of uh, they when they have hyperglycemia that it uh, it sounds that they have lack of insulin lack of insulin means lack of activation of this pump when when the pump is not so active then there is a tendency to uh, potassium accumulate uh, outside the cell in the plasma uh, so uh, you can see some uh, results which says that uh, high, uh, slightly higher potassium level with slightly lower uh, uh, sodium levels uh, with hyperglycemia. Okay, now we look at a famous medicine which inhibit the function of this sodium potassium ATPase pump. That is none other than cardiac glycoside called digoxin. Uh, digoxin uh, goes and inhibit the uh, sodium potassium ATPS pump only in cardiac muscles, heart muscles. So when uh, digoxin uh, go and inhibit the sodium potassium ATPS pump, uh, that means sodium cannot be pumped out of the cell. So sodium concentration inside the cell going to be higher. This high sodium concentration in turn inhibit and uh, there is another uh, exchanger here in cardiac muscle, uh, only in cardiac muscles that calls sodium calcium, sodium calcium exchanger. This sodium calcium exchanger, how uh, does it work? Uh, this sodium calcium exchanger pump sodium inside at the same time pump out the calcium from the cell but when the sodium concentration inside the cell is very high uh, it signals that no no don't come we have enough sodium inside so sodium coming inside will be uh, inhibited because of high sodium concentration level. That means the, the calcium inside the cell remain longer. So when the calcium uh, goes up because of the inhibition of this uh, sodium calcium exchanger inhibition, uh, the, the contractility of cardiac muscle will increase. That means uh, heart muscle can pump more effectively. Uh, so this is why we are using uh, this digoxin in cardiac failure patients in order to increase the contractility of the uh, cardiac muscle. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching uh, this video. Uh, leave your comments. Bye.